Energization Plan. Lockout, Tagout Safety Program 29 CFR 1910.147 The Control of Hazardous Energy, Lockout, Tagout. Purpose and Scope. The purpose of this procedure is to establish uniform methods for disabling powered equipment, machinery, and electrical circuits prior to the performance of inspections, maintenance, or repairs. The procedure will apply to any source of mechanical, hydraulic, electrical, electromagnetic, chemical, thermal, radiation, or other energy. This includes electrical circuit breakers and or switches, power source controls to air, water, steam or hydraulic valves, and other devices controlling the operation of equipment. Responsibility. The effective administration of this procedure is the primary responsibility of the superintendent. All job sites, which assign employees to service, maintenance, installation and repair activities are also responsible to protect employees from the unintentional release of hazardous energy. The safety department has the responsibility of providing assistance with hazard assessments, operational guidelines and training program development, annual and routine inspections and with the actual hands-on training of all employees. In addition, all subcontractors will adhere to lockout, tagout procedures, based on this procedure or their own, whichever is more stringent while performing services. Types of hazardous energy include mechanical, springs, rotating parts, etc. Magnetic, capacitors and superconducting magnetic energy storage gravity, machinery or equipment parts that might descend slide or fall if left unblocked electrical, relating to or operated by electricity, AC or DC, hydraulic, moved or operated by a fluid under pressure, either internal or external pneumatic, cylinders, lines and pipes thermal, hot or cold chemical, produced as a result of a chemical reaction steam, water kept under pressure to supply energy for heating or mechanical work. Definitions. Affected employee. An employee whose job requires them to operate, use a machine, equipment on which servicing, maintenance is being performed under lockout, tagout, or whose job requires them to work in an area which such servicing, maintenance is being performed. Authorized employee. A person who locks or implements a tagout system procedure on machines, equipment to perform servicing, maintenance on that machine, equipment. An authorized employee and an affected employee may be the same person when the affected employee's duties also include performing maintenance, service on a machine, equipment, locked, or a tagout system implemented. Blanking. The physical disconnection of process flow piping, e.g., lines containing air, water, steam oil, chemicals, etc., and the application of caps, plugs, blind flanges, etc., to positively prevent the flow of material. Capable of being locked out, an energy isolating device will be considered to be capable of being locked out either if it is designed with a hasp or other attachment or integral part to which, or through which, a lock can be affixed, or if it has a locking mechanism built into it. Other energy isolating devices will also be considered capable of being locked out. Lockout achieved without the need to dismantle, rebuild, or replace the energy isolating device or permanently alter its energy control capability. Emergency repairs. Repairs needed in critical operations where an accident or failure to complete the operation would result in any of the following. Loss of life or serious injury to employees loss of function of a facility serious interference or stoppage of contract performance loss of high value end items, parts or tools. Energized. Connected to an energy source or containing residual or stored energy. Energy isolating device. A mechanical device that physically prevents the transmission, release of energy including but not limited to the following. A disconnect switch. A manually operated switch by which the conductor of a circuit can be disconnected from all ungrounded supply connectors and, in addition, no pole can be operated independently. A slide gate. A slip blind. A line valve. A block. And any similar device used to block or isolate energy. The term does not include a push button, selector switch or other control circuit type devices. Energy source. Any source of electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal or other energy. Group lockout. A procedure, which provides a level of protection equivalent to that provided by a personal lockout or tagout device, when servicing and or maintenance, is performed by a crew, department, or other group. Hot tap. A procedure used in the repair, maintenance and service activities that involves welding on a piece of equipment, pipelines, vessels or tanks, under pressure in order to install connections or appurtenances. It is commonly used to replace or add sections of pipeline without the interruption of service for air, gas, water, steam and petrochemical distribution systems. 
Hydraulic pressure. Hydraulic energy is a system of pumps, valves, hoses, etc. delivering fluid under pressure to perform work. Hydraulic energy performs work through two major routes, cylinders and pumps. Examples include trash compactors, presses, balers and forklifts. Lockout. The placement of a lockout device on an energy source, ensuring that the equipment cannot be operated until the lockout device is removed. Lockout device. A device utilizing a positive means such as a lock, either key or combination type, to render switches, valves, or equipment inoperable and preventing the energizing of a machine or equipment. Lockout tagout log. A record of the status of all locks on the project. Log should describe the lock, tag number, where the equipment or machinery being locked is located, name of the employee, contact information of the employee, a date, time in and a date, time with signature out. Normal production operations, the utilization of a machine or equipment to perform its intended production function. Other employee, an employee whose work is or may be in an area where energy control procedures may be utilized. Point, S, of protection. Point or place where a lockout device has been placed on an energy isolation device to protect employees from the hazardous release of energy. Powered equipment, equipment which is activated, operated or moved by electricity, air, hydraulics, compressed springs. Servicing, workplace activities such as constructing, installing, modifying, and maintaining, servicing machines, equipment. These activities include lubrication, cleaning or unjamming of machines or equipment and making adjustments or tool changes, where the employee may be exposed to the unexpected energization or startup of the equipment or release of hazardous energy. Setting up. Any work performed to prepare a machine or equipment to perform its normal production operation. Tagout. The placement of a tagout device at the control area of an electrical circuit, utility line, valve, machinery, equipment indicating that the energy isolating device and the equipment controlled not operated until the tag out device removed tag out device a prominent warning device such as a tag and a means of attachment which can be securely fastened to an energy isolating device to indicate that the energy being controlled may not be operated until the tag out device is removed only the person whose name appears on the tag or their supervisor will remove the tag tags should indicate the name of the person attaching the tag the reason the tag was attached the name of the person authorized to remove the tag the time and date the tag was signed. Verification. Verification. Try out of machines, equipment or processes to assure that energy sources have been isolated. General requirements. Lockout, tag out devices will be used whenever any person is working on powered systems where unexpected energizing could present a hazard. In cases where more than one individual is needed to work on powered equipment, each person working on the equipment will attach a padlock or tag to a multiple lockout device. Lockout, tag out does not apply to normal production operations, servicing and maintenance when employees are not exposed. Plug and cord electrical equipment is excluded where the equipment is unplugged, and the plug is under the exclusive control of the employee. The tag out process will only be used in cases where there is no other means of lockout and when approved by supervision. Emergency repairs may be necessary on energized circuits in critical operation where alternate power sources are not available or where the desired results cannot be accomplished with deactivated circuits. In such cases, approval will be obtained from all supervisory personnel involved before repairs are made. Areas will be roped off and or adequately posted with warning. Signs where maintenance or construction work is being performed that could be hazardous to a passerby. Unauthorized persons entering roped off areas will be subject to disciplinary action. Incidents should be reported to appropriate management who should report the violation to the individual supervisor and safety director. Persons performing work requiring lockout or tag out will notify their supervisor immediately if they have problems complying with this procedure. Responsibilities. Responsibilities include specific to this energy management plan include the following. Controlling energy marshal designated employee who is responsible for the overall energy management plan on a data center campus. The controlling energy marshal can act in an authorizing energy marshal role and is accountable for the implementation of all forms of energy management. The controlling energy marshal is responsible until EAST is complete. Once EAST is complete, controlling energy marshal is turned over to the building operations team. Authorizing energy marshal an individual who authorizes energy isolation tasks and on behalf of and under the supervision of the controlling energy marshal. 
The authorizing energy marshal ensures program requirements, contract terms and conditions, and applicable regulatory requirements are followed. This individual also provides authorization and approval of energy isolation work permits to the performing energy isolation coordinator. Site manager The site manager should verify that all requirements specified in this work instruction have been met prior to authorizing a supervisor to remove an authorized person's lockout device. The site manager should assure that annual and post-incident reviews, as defined below, have been performed. The site manager should maintain a spare or multiple spare keys for locks used in the lockout program in a safe, secure manner. The site manager should approve the use of specific lockout devices to be used for each type of equipment that may need to be serviced. Ensuring that all affected employees receive training on the appropriate procedures as necessary for their particular job duties. Taking the appropriate action when an employee or supervisor reports unsafe conditions. Conducting or coordinating periodic inspections of LODO procedures. Pursuing the appropriate corrective action for employees that are not complying with the LODO program or any other energy control procedures. Site supervision It is the responsibility of each person who supervises employees that perform work covered by this procedure to train employees in the recognition of hazardous energy sources and the method and means of isolating such sources. Monitor the work to verify compliance with this procedure. Ensure that adequate supplies of energy isolating devices and lockout devices, i.e., locks, tags, etc., are readily available. Confirm that operations and or client personnel properly prepare each job prior to implementing lockout and tagout procedures. Determine the best lockout method, individual or group, for each lockout and tagout operation. Supervise all group lockout activities. Taking the appropriate corrective action for employees that are not complying with the LODO program or any other energy control procedures. Ensure coordination, cooperation and conveyance of necessary information between employees and outside contractors when the unexpected energization or startup of machines or equipment, or release of stored energy could cause injury to employees or contract employees. Employee responsibilities authorized employees of the application and removal of lockout and or tagout devices should notify affected employees. Notification should be given before the locks and tags are applied and after they are removed from machinery and or equipment. Other responsibilities include Attending and completing the LODO training Follow the established lockout, tagout procedures Notify the employer of machinery or equipment not capable of being locked out Never remove a lock with bolt cutters Notify the supervisor of any unsafe conditions Performing Energy Isolation Coordinator an individual who manages and or performs the isolation process of stored energy for those directly performing the work. The performing energy isolation coordinator performs several key tasks, ensures a hazardous energy, level 2, risk assessment to identify exposures to workers as conducted, obtains energy isolation authorization work permits from the authorizing energy marshal when conducting any work, which requires the isolation of hazardous energized equipment. Ensures the development and implementation of a written equipment-specific energy isolation procedure for all individual units of energized equipment that will be de-energized. Ensures the authorized person completes a qualification training process and is authorized by their employer to conduct energy isolation procedures. Conducts a meeting with all workers involved with the energy isolation process to discuss the Level 2 Activity Risk Assessment and Equipment-Specific Energy Isolation Procedure. Ensures adequate information. Instruction and competent person supervision is available for the authorized person during energy isolating procedures. Ensures sufficient energy isolation equipment and correct personal protective equipment are provided. Ensures his or her own uniquely keyed personal lock protects every individual performing work that could be exposed to hazardous energy. Ensures the training of affected, unauthorized, persons to ensure a basic understanding of the dangers associated with hazardous energy and the importance of not tampering with energy isolating devices. Ensures that the required periodic inspections and audits of the implementation and effectiveness of the local energy isolation program are conducted. Authorized person this individual is responsible to obtain a copy of the LODO plan form from the performing energy isolation coordinator when conducting any work, which requires energy isolation. Notify all affected personnel of energy isolation procedure prior to work commencing. Wear PPE appropriate for the tasks being performed. Specific requirements. Projects job sites will establish specific lockout, tagout guidelines to include inspections, identification, and regular employee training. 
procedures and techniques for the control of hazardous energy will be developed and documented. Job sites may conduct a hazards analysis, assisted by safety director when requested, to determine the adequacy of their lockout, tagout guidelines. The guidelines will clearly and specifically outline the scope, purpose, authorization, rules, and techniques to be utilized for the control of hazardous energy, and the means to enforce compliance including but not limited to the following. A specific statement of the intended use of the guideline specific steps for shutting down, isolating, blocking, and securing machines or equipment to control hazardous energy specific steps for placement, removal, and transfer of lockout, tagout devices and the responsibility for them specific requirements for testing a machine or equipment to determine effectiveness of lockout devices, tagout devices and other energy control measures. Departments will supply all lockout, tagout materials including locks, multiple lockout clamping devices, tags and blanking devices. Lockout devices and tagout devices will be singularly identified will be the only devices used for controlling energy, will not be used for other purposes and will meet the following requirements. Durable O lockout and tagout services will be capable of withstanding the environment to which they are exposed for the maximum period of time that exposure is expected. O tagout devices will be constructed and printed so that exposure to weather conditions or wet and damp locations will not cause the tag to deteriorate or the message on the tag to become illegible. O tags will not deteriorate when used in corrosive environments such as areas where acid and alkali chemicals are handled and stored. Standardized O lockout and tagout devices will be standardized in at least one of the following criteria color, shape, or size, and additionally, in the case of tagged devices, print and format will be standardized. Substantial O lockout devices will be substantial enough to prevent removal without the use of excessive force or unusual techniques, such as with the use of bolt cutters or other metal cutting tools. O tagout devices, including their means of attachment, will be substantial enough to prevent inadvertent or accidental removal. Tagout device attachment means will be of a non reusable type, attachable by hand, self locking and non-releasable with a minimum unlocking strength of no less than 50 pounds and having the general design and basic characteristics of being at least equivalent to a one-piece, all-environment-tolerant nylon cable tie. Identifiable O lockout and tagout devices will indicate the identity of the employee applying the devices. O tagout devices will warn against hazardous conditions if the machine or equipment is energized and will include a legend such as the following. Do not start, do not open, do not close, do not energize or do not operate. Job sites will provide training with the assistance and approval of safety director, for, authorized, affected, and, other, employees. Such training will be documented with the employee's name and dates of training and will include. O each authorized employee will receive training in the recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources, the type and magnitude of the energy available in the workplace, and the methods and means necessary for energy isolation and control. O each affected employee will be instructed in the purpose and the use of the energy control procedures. O all other employees whose work operations are or may be in an area where energy control procedures may be utilized will be instructed about the procedure and about prohibitions relating to attempts to restart or re energize machines or equipment which are locked out or tagged out. When tag-out systems are used, employees will be trained in the following limitations of tags. O tags are essentially warning devices affixed to energy-isolating devices, and do not provide the physical restraint on those devices that is provided by a lock. O when a tag is attached to an energy-isolating means, it is not to be removed without authorization of the authorized person responsible for it, and it is never to be bypassed, ignored, or otherwise defeated. O tags should be legible and understandable by all authorized employees, affected employees, and all other employees whose work operations are or may be in the area, in order to be effective. O tags and their means of attachment should be made of materials, which will withstand the environmental conditions encountered in the workplace. O tags may evoke a false sense of security, and their meaning needs to be understood as part of the overall energy control program. O tags securely attached to energy isolating devices so that they cannot be inadvertently or accidentally detached during use. Employee retraining will be the responsibility of the job site, with the assistance of the safety department, and will consist of the following O retraining will be provided for all authorized and affected employees whenever there is a change in their job assignments, a change in machines, equipment, or processes that present a new hazard, or when there is a change in the energy control procedures. O additional retraining will also be conducted whenever periodic inspection reveals, or whenever the department has reason to believe, 
that there are deviations from or inadequacies in the employee's knowledge or use of the energy control procedures. O. The retraining will re-establish employee proficiency and introduce new or revised control methods and guidelines as necessary. The job site will ensure an inspection of energy control lockout, tagout procedures to verify effectiveness. An authorized employee other than the one utilizing the energy control guidelines being inspected will perform the annual inspection. The annual inspection will be designed to correct any deviations or inadequacies observed. Where lockout is used for energy control, the inspection will include a review, between the inspector and each authorized employee, of that employee's responsibilities under the energy control procedure being inspected. Where tag out is used for energy control, the inspection will include a review, between the inspector and each authorized and affected employee, of that employee's responsibilities under the energy control procedure being inspected, and the training required concerning the limitations of tags. High Risk Activity Forecasting and Planning a High Risk Activity HRA, plan should be developed for tasks involving energizations on site. The following elements should be described as part of the Level 2 plan, which will involve a meeting one to two weeks before the task takes place. O. The identification of electrical and energy isolation activities in the work scope and schedule. The process to be used to identify energy sources or utilities. O. The process to perform energy isolation activities including a job hazard analysis and a risk assessment. This includes procedures on how energy sources will be safely locked out, tagged out. O. Arc flash and shock hazard analysis, which includes voltage personnel will be exposed to. This should include boundary requirements and required PPE. O MOPs pertaining to the specific activity. O if necessary, an arc flash study labeling per the up-to-date NFPA 70E. O a process for issuing permits if necessary. O training and authorization requirements for those performing energy isolation activities. O protection of work areas, lockout, tagout, loto, and personal protective equipment, X. Cal rated suits, gloves, etc. O emergency plans in the event of an emergency including backout procedures. O all other EHS procedures and regulatory requirements specific to electrical and or energy isolation activities. On the day of the confined space activity, a daily hazard analysis will be completed which should include O required PPE associated with the task. O any previous near misses, incidents or lessons learned for the previous day's work. O change management process for changing site conditions that affect how the work is to be completed. O the steps of the task of the day, the hazards and the mitigation of those hazards. O crew sign in section. Lockout, tagout procedures. Notify all affected employees that install, service or maintenance is required on equipment and that it will be shut down and locked, tagged out to perform the maintenance. 2. Understand the hazard, electrical shock, burn could result from contact with exposed conductors, line voltage, high voltage equipment. Flying parts, evaporated metal, fire could result if this circuit is shorted. Electricity will be controlled at the circuit breaker, main switch, plug, fuse block to reduce electrical hazards. 3. Shut down the equipment following normal procedures. 4. Isolate the source of energy. Locate the main switch, circuit breaker, electrical plug to the equipment. Open breaker, open switch, remove plug. Attach a lockout enabling device if the equipment cannot accommodate a padlock. Place the plug, insulation device, in a plug control box. 5. Secure the energy controlling lockout by attaching a personal lock and completed tag to the lockout enabling device. If more than one person performs the work, each will apply his or her own lock to a multiple lock device, HASP. 6. The affected employees, trade partner energy marshal and clune representative apply their own lock in sequence. 7. Release all stored energy in equipment. Discharge any large capacitors and ensure they remain shorted. 8. Verify that no potential energy can be released. Verify that no voltage is present by testing equipment with a voltmeter. Release from lockout, TAGOUT9. Inspect the equipment and the surrounding area following completion of work for loose tools, parts, equipment integrity, exposed conductors. Check that all safety devices are in place. 10. Notify others in the area that the equipment is about to be powered, returned to service, turned on, energized. Ask them to stay clear of the area until the service has been restored. 11. Remove personal locks and tags and lockout enabling devices from equipment.
The same person who applied the tags and locks should perform this step. Clune will remove their lock last once verification has occurred. Electrical awareness training Electrical awareness training is required for all personnel that will gain access to a live electrical room. Training will cover awareness of potential hazards from live energy. This training alone does not authorize any work to take place on or in electrical equipment. The topics reviewed in the electrical awareness training are O Quick Overview of Electrical Safety Regulatory Standards, OSHA 1910, OSHA 1926, NEC 2020, IEEE 1584 2018, NFBA 70E 2021. O electrical hazards in the work environment O electrical injury types and electrical injury trends, electric shock, arc flash, arc blast, electrocution. O basic introductory electrical safety principles O risk assessment, hazard identification and hazard controls around electrical installations and equipment O low, TO, arc flash protection, access control, work boundaries, authorized versus unauthorized, qualified versus unqualified, labeling, signage, barriers, tools and equipment housekeeping, inspection, and maintenance, energized versus de-energized, ancillary activities o safe versus unsafe work practices case examples o summary and conclusion. Pre-energization documentation procedure pre-energization inspections will be scheduled with trade partner, clune, vendor and the client, if required. The mentioned parties will need to sign off when the inspection is completed. Prior to inspection, the room and equipment will need to be scheduled for a final clean. After inspection by all parties is complete, the equipment will be closed until the authorized startup date. If the equipment does not pass inspection, rework will be classified as schedule work. The rework will be inspected along with general items within the equipment, i.e., cleanliness. Hard copies of the pre energization inspections will be scanned and uploaded to designated location for startup checklists for the designated equipment. Ready for startup checklists will be completed post pre energization inspection. Controlled access zone security will be on site to monitor the check in, check out process. Security will be located at room entrances to ensure doors are not propped open and personnel are authorized to be in that room. Electrical room containers will be off limits except for personnel with electrical awareness training who is preforming scheduled work or startups. After the start of Level 4 commissioning, only authorized employees are allowed into electrical room containers with proper PPE. Areas outside of the ERCs will follow the approach boundary dictated by equipment's ARC flash label. The boundaries will be shown through barriers. Lockout, tagout program The lockout, tagout, loto program provides clune employees, trade partners and vendors with standards for establishing the required conditions to control potentially hazardous energy associated with electrical and other types of energy sources. These, when combined with appropriate work standards, procedures, and work methods, will provide a safe work environment. The program is put into place to ensure that systems are effectively locked out and in zero energy potential condition before any employee performs any work including servicing and or maintenance on that device or equipment. Trade partner will provide the lockout tagout procedure with a LODO plan, request form and LODO log. Clune will periodically audit the lockout tagout log. 